Welcome back to my shop. In my 2000 subscriber special video I let you vote on what you want to see next and you could decide between a shop tour and a Q&A. And the vast majority of you wanted to see a shop tour so here we go. I'm going to structure this video into four parts. I'm going to show you the layout of my shop. I'm going to show you a little bit of what has been, what the shop looked like when I got into it, what it is like now and what I'm planning to do with it or what might be. So here's the basic layout of my shop. It's the basement of a two-car garage so that's about the room I have. When you come in on the left there's the workbench, there's a drill press table, uh, some shelves and cabinets, a lot of stuff on the wall, more shelves on the walls, and in the middle I have a lumber cart that I built recently, the table saw and another shelf which I'm going to talk about later. Now for some background on what the shop looked like before I got into it. When we bought the house um, this was not a wood shop but basically a garden shop. The previous owners were enthusiastic gardeners so much of the space in here was taken up by garden tools, by pots and so on. And slowly I tried to turn this into a wood, wood shop and I'm still in the process of doing that. And a lot of the shelves on the walls and still some of the stuff that's in these shelves and on the, in, in various crates and so on is still stuff that I took over when we bought the house or that I just haven't got round to finding other spots for or throwing out or whatever. So I'm still very much in the process of turning this shop into my wood shop. Some corners are already my spaces with wood shop character but other corners of the shop are still very much as they were when I took over. So now I'm going to show you around in the space as it is now. This is the area of the shop that you're probably most familiar with. There's the door where you can get in and this is the workbench. When I got in here this was just a simple self-built workbench by the previous owner and I turned it into a woodworking workbench and I um, attached these um, MDF sheets and the holes um, for the bench hooks and so on and I made this Moxon vise. I have blog posts about this but they're in German and I don't have any videos because back then I didn't do videos. Um, in, the, in the cabinets here that I built are the power tools like my plunge saw and the, the, um, my plunge saw and the drills and so on. So that's all at the bottom here. And then step by step I built this into a tool wall. Um, one of the first things that I did was put these OSB sheets on the wall and the French cleat system. Um, so basically because the walls are concrete and I like it much better when the OSB is on the walls because it looks more wooden. And um, it, much, it made it much easier of course to attach those French cleats and to attach the tools and the tool holders to that. So now we moved a little into the corner. This is my drill press table basically. This is just a regular drill mounted on a drill mount and I built this drill press table for it which works all right. Um, it's sometime, I sometimes wish I had a real drill press but on the other hand this was much cheaper and um, it's a lot more flexible because I, I can drill horizontally. As you can see for example in the video where I built a candle stand out of an old beam and so at the moment it's fairly alright. Sometimes I miss a real drill press but most of the time this just works fine. This is just a cabinet that was down here and that I use as my sticker swap cabinet wall. So there's lots of stickers um, from various woodworkers over here and in this corner apart from the drill press table which by the way is an old table which I inherited from my late grandmother um, is another storage space so there I have the, the tracks for the track saw, um, the, the spirit level and basically some empty French cleats which are going to be used hopefully in the near future. And over on this wall there is now a lot of storage and now we're going to look at that. 
So on this wall, this is something that you don't usually see. Um, it's a shelf which I built when I was a student for a small room I had and it got reused down here and this is in a formal bathroom cabinet and this is also a little chest of drawers that I got from my father-in-law and this is just unstructured storage at the moment. Here are my screws and a lot of other stuff and here are some rags and the painting stuff and brushes and so on but um, overall it's not very structured yet and that's because I've only just put this in here in a different place and I'm already I'm still thinking about a good solution for this. These black boxes are um, completely empty at the moment and I still have to figure out a good way to use them. Um, I got them for very cheap because a company in the vicinity here um, they changed their, their um, storage system and they but they sold them for very cheap money, so I got a couple of them um, and I have some ideas of what to use them for, but first I have to clean out some other spaces and then figure out a way of actually using them properly. And this little, these little drawers here I use for small storage stuff like um, nuts and bolts and small amounts of, of um, screws and so on, but overall this needs work. Now this is the far corner of the shop where um, you first see the lumber cart that I built recently which was a big step forward because it helped me actually do the first step of cleaning out this corner but basically this is the stuff that I can't get rid of at the moment like um, uh, garden tools and some um, metal stuff that I just store because I might need it at some point and well you see that it's not really structured or cleaned up or tidy or whatever. So this is basically the remote corner of the shop where I put things that I don't want to think about at the moment. Now these shelves were in here and I used them previously as clamp racks. But now that I have the, lum the lumber cart I want to redo the layout here. And these are basically going to go all together because um, they're sticking into the center of the room and the idea is to have the table saw a bit more over here and then have at the center of the room the table saw with an assembly table attached to it and an outfeed table so that I basically have a second workbench um, as an island in the middle and for that I have to get rid of these shelves. And this complete shelf here was in here when I got in and you can see it still has a lot of paint that we used for the walls when we renovated the house and it has some garden stuff in here, some old tools, boxes with lots of stuff in it and well this is an area that also needs to be cleaned up and I got these boxes here also from, from um, some, someone who didn't need them anymore and that's another aspect where I have to think about how to use them properly and maybe do some dividers for them so that I can actually use them for proper storage. At the moment they're just well stored here but they're still empty and at the bottom here we have the children's toys for the garden and so on so this is another area where I'd like to get more structured where I get the garden stuff reduced or I'd like to get it reduced or at least put into some some of these boxes perhaps um, that it doesn't look so untidy but well there is so much to do in so little time so I'll do it step by step. Now we've come to the fourth wall basically a full circle already because in that corner is the door again and this is another shelf that was in here and I use it as my lumber storage but it's got a lot of room for improvement as you can see this OSB sheet is for a project that I'm planning in the next couple of weeks hopefully so depending on how soon I get this video edited this might actually be um, online before the shop tour video but I'll see how I can do that and down here there's still other stuff that is not about woodworking here's some garden stuff and there's some garden stuff um, but I don't have any other places for it at the moment so it has to remain in here and the lumber storage obviously has to be improved and 
these parts here are not ideal because I have to get in here and out at the at the short end and it would be much better of course if I could put the lumber in here from the front but well as I said a lot of areas to work on and it's going to happen step by step so after doing all the walls we're now at the center of the shop this is where my table saw is and the dust extractor and this is basically just an island here in the middle um, that's an area that I'd really like to improve and enlarge. I, as I said, I'd like to build an assembly table that basically attaches to this side and has an L shape so that it also doubles as an outfit table. Basically the layout that Holzwurm Tom has in his shop, that's where I got the idea from. And then the idea is to have the shop dust extractor on a cart pushed under the, one of those tables so that it's out of the way because at the moment I only use it for the table saw and when I do sanding and so on I have that self-built cyclone um, in the corner with another shop vac so at the moment I only need it down here um, so that's basically the full tour of the shop as it is and now I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do I already mentioned some of the stuff um, the most, most important thing for me is to improve this area in the middle here. I'd really like um, to have another workbench to work on and I, as I said I want to build an outfit table here and an assembly table here to the side then move the whole assembly a little bit to the wall so that I have an island as a workbench in the middle and then I'd have one workbench over here and another workbench over here and that would improve the situation of putting away work pieces or opening a box for example while you're still working on that area that would improve that a lot so that's one of the plans that I have another plan is to improve the lighting situation in here in this shop tour you probably realize that I have very bad light um, it's very dark in here and that's something that's just barely okay for working but for filming it's really not enough light and that's another thing that I'd like to improve in the near future. Then of course I already mentioned the storage situation. I have plenty of shelves. They are mostly, they have been mostly in here before I came in and I really have to put them to better use. I have all the boxes and I just have to clean out the shelves and figure out ways of storing things and that's another thing that I'm going to slowly step by step do because it really looks really untidy and I don't like the look of all those corners filled with craft and I'd like to really clean things up a bit. Apart from that you probably realize that this is still a woodworking shop in the making. It has one corner over here with the tool wall that already is very much workable and that is a lot of fun to work in but basically all the remaining walls um, can use a lot of work before they're actually a good woodworking shop. Plenty of storage stuff is still missing for example I need storage for sandpaper for sanders um, I'd like to store my, my um, screws in a better place. I'd like to, to make drawers for the table saw cabinet and so on. Uh, well, plenty of ideas and plenty of, plenty of stuff to do. But if I'm, if I'm lucky, I get a couple of hours of shop time a week. Sometimes it's just an hour or two and in some weeks it's not even that. So there's still a lot of, there are going to be a lot of months going by before you see many of these projects that I just mentioned so don't hold your breath um, but I hope you still find it interesting what I put out in this in my view quite limited shop if you compare it with other woodworkers that you see on YouTube. So that was the tour of my shop I hope you enjoyed it um, I'd really love to hear your ideas on what I could do with the various walls and shelves that you saw and if you have good ideas on anything else that I showed you, I'd, really, I'd be really pleased to read about it in the comments. If you have any questions about the stuff that I showed you that I didn't show closely enough, for example, then also send me, write me a comment and I'll try to um, address it um, by replying to that. 
Once again, thanks for watching and I hope you found this interesting. I hope to see you back soon and as always remember to watch, learn and then make something.